Welcome to the next part of this exercise. So and now that we have verified that the steel members are correct or capable of bearing the design loads and combinations, we may continue with the development of this frame and pay attention to the aspect of the connections. Now something to mention, and just like for the sections, is that this we can observe is nothing but a first proposal for the design of the connection, and for which the design code that we can read at the top of the dialog was considered. Namely, we still need to perform its calculation so we can determine if adjustments are needed or otherwise. So let's take a few moments to briefly explore some of the parameters found in this dialog. On the left side, we find each of the categories or components that we can adjust for this connection, and which for the most part are self-explanatory. The plate group, for example, will allow us to specify the dimensions of the plate, its material, and if upper or lower brackets should be added, and if so, the dimensions of these. To the right of the dialog, and depending on the selected group, we find a diagram illustrating the function of each individual parameter and how they affect the design of the connection. So basically, is in this way that we can navigate through each of these groups of parameters and perform any modification that we may need. Of course, and as we said earlier, until we perform the calculation of the connection, we really don't know whether this design is correct or if some adjustments are required. Although, it may be adequate to go to the code parameters category and check if the starting configuration for said calculation requires some changes. For example, let's change the type of global structure analysis to elastoplastic analysis. Also, through this following section, we may change the frame type if need be. Other than that, we need to check the calculation results so we can determine if changes to the connection's design are required. As we can observe, the results aren't at all satisfactory, since at the top right corner of the calculation note, we find an efficiency ratio of 3.56. Namely, as stands, this connection is loaded way beyond its total capacity and is not compliant with the governing design code. However, we can still skim through the calculation note and find the specific set of reasons for this. Bottom line, we need to go back to the connections dialog and create a more robust design. This time we have achieved a way better efficiency ratio. Thus, we may conclude that the design of this connection is acceptable. So we reiterate, that is up to the structural engineer to determine the most convenient solution and the final design of the connection.